men going down as possible receivers crossed and they almost forced the TCU people to run into each other. So we await the discussion by the officials. Last year, Bud alluded to the fact that Baylor won last year's ball game 56-21. One of the things that happened in that ball game was a tremendous performance by Ralph Stockover, who is the tailback today in place of the starter, Ron Francis. The penalty is against TCU on a personal foul, taking the ball to the 48-yard line after the penalty down into TCU territory, where it's the first down for Baylor. By the way, last year, Stockover, who was a non-scholarship freshman, and non-scholarship freshman Derek McAdoo combined for 234 rushing yards and five touchdowns in that ball game last year against TCU. Here we go, first down Baylor. Stockover, and he is piled up near the 46 by Byron Linwood, the strong safety after a gain of about two. This was a play that was called to the outside. Stockman starts to the outside, then hits it and cuts it back against the green. Fortunately, the defensive end held his position, was able to make a clean tackle for a short game. Stockover is from Alma, Arkansas. Junior is rushed for 244 yards coming into this game today. Second down, no score, first quarter, 9.42 to go. Play action, Mickey to the near side, and a fine catch by Horace H., number 23, on the 36. The coverage by Sean Thomas, number 22, but you can't throw a ball much better than that or have a better reception. Well, it was beautiful execution all the way on both sides. Defense plays it very well, too. You can see the two men crossing. The pattern of the inside man freezes the man trying to cover across. Fine throw, good, inter good completion, first down in the play. Mickey guiding the Baylor Bears and doing an excellent job. This is their second position, and they have moved the ball steadily. First down. Mickey to the near side again, this time intended for Bobby Joe Conrad. And Littles had the coverage. Remember to stay tuned at halftime for the next in our series of Greatest of the Great. Today, UT's Harley Sewell is featured. Greatest of the Great is presented by the Jefferson Pilot Corporation, dedicated to life and the things that make it worth living. Mickey is checking signals often at the line of scrimmage. He had a man-for-man -man coverage that time. Conrad against Littles. He checked to the play, but Littles was able to handle his assignment. TCU defense. Not quite coming up. Here comes the blitz, and Mickey gets it away to the far side, incomplete. Horace H. was out there. TCU tries to give you a different look on the defense all the time, don't they? They play a great number of combinations in the defensive secondary, and they also change the spacing every single down so that the offensive team never has the comfort of knowing exactly where they're going to be because they won't be in the same place that they were on the previous play. How can they remember all that? Well, if you're well-coached, well-drilled, uh, it comes sort of uh, second instinct, actually, when you get in the game. Third down, 10. Big down now for the defensive TCU because Baylor has moved the ball steadily on both possessions. And as, again, TCU comes up, shows blitz inside, and Mickey calls a timeout, apparently not liking what he saw. We've got a timeout by Baylor, and we'll be back right after this. I am the footsteps of William Shakespeare along the River Avon. I am a once mighty castle on the shores of Loch Ness. I am a thatched cottage in an old English village. I am British Caledonian Airways. I am the first class way to London. I will serve you the finest European cuisine. You will enjoy the luxury and comfort of a sky lounger's seat and the personal service recognized by many as the finest in the world. I am the best of Great Britain. I am British Caledonian Airways. And goblins gather round the time for chills and thrills. So party down, no matter who you like to fight, you're gonna want Coors and Coors Light tonight. Coors Light's beer will be clear, fun is everywhere. Get ready for excitement when Coors is on the scene. Cause anything can happen. On the Coors and Coors Light Halloween. Third down coming up for the Baylor Bears. But
Todd Wilkinson, the Horned Frogs counted offense, and we know what it can do. It's had one problem today. They've only had the ball for one series. That's right, and on that series, their offensive line was not able to handle the tough defensive linemen. So here is that third down call coming up for the Baylor Bears at the 36-yard line of TCU. Here comes that TCU defense up close. Mickey with time, throws back to the near side, completed on the 30 to Broderick Sargent, the fullback brought down by Byron Linwood. And did he get a first down? He looks a little short. He did a good job of trying to pick up that first down after he made the catch. Watch the play again. Mickey drops straight back, rolls just slightly, looks off to his right, then hits the crossing pattern. The pass is caught easily, but the defense closes. Almost missed the tackle, but they did get him down, and he is short of the first down. It is fourth down and two, and the Bears are going to go for it. They've got two tight ends, Joel Barrett, 88, Gary Ward, number 80. Sargent is the fullback, Stalker the tailback. Fourth down. out of bounds in the 23 by Byron Linwood, the strong safety from Pittsburgh, Texas, who reached like a linebacker, but Stockerberg got the first down behind the blocking of Mark Cochran, number 63, and Jeff Palmer, who pulled all the way from the left guard spot. Fine execution. The way Vicky runs the play is to take a little step back and go down the line of scrimmage. That gives him a little longer time to lead the defensive man. First down on the 23 of TCU. No score, 8.33 to go in the first quarter. Tom Mickey guard, guiding the Baylor Bears. Junior from Angleton. Off Stockerberg. His field back. This is what Mickey's done so far. Stockerberg, big hole up the middle, and he is down inside the 20 to near the 17. Bill Tomini, number 98. The sophomore strong tackle made the hit. And the Baylor offensive line seems to dominate the view at this point. We see Spinners, he breaks through the hole as it opened up inside, he moved downfield, finally was tackled, but six yards gained on the play. Second down, four, bring up. Roderick Sargent at fullback, Stockover at tailback, Bobby Joe Conrad, the split. Glenn Pruitt, the wing back. Stockover. Stockover inside the 15, about the 13. Kent Trammell, number 91, the nose guard, who's an outstanding defensive football player, makes the tackle gain of about four and four for first down. Let's see if they make And Pew has, as you pointed out, Merlin, almost everyone very close to the line of scrimmage, and they still are not able to fill quickly enough to keep Baylor from dominating the offensive line of scrimmage with their running attack. So it is third down and short, very short, as Baylor did not make the first down. They bring on Kerry Ward along with Joel Barrett as tight ends as they go to power. Third down. Sergeant hit at the line of scrimmage by Kevin Dean, number seven. Let's see what was spotted. Watch the offensive line. You can see the takeoff of the Baylor lineman to blitz on. The blitz was able to fill the hole, and we had a very tackle. Stopped them short of the first down. That was Kevin Dean, the defensive end. That being a measurement, he might have picked it up. Any part of the ball will do it. All eyes are on this one. First down, Baylor. The Bears had their last drive stopped by a fumble and a recovery by TCU. With seven minutes, eight seconds to go in the first quarter, Jim Wacker's Horn Frogs have had their hands on the football for only three plays and a punt. When you're playing against the number one offensive team in the country, the best defense is to keep the ball as Baylor is doing. So here come the Bears with a first down inside the 15 of TCU. McGee throwing, Mickey completing to Horace Eights, and Eights is inside the five for Garland Littles, number 20. The freshman wrestles him down, a gain of about nine, and we have a flag in the play. That's Horace Eights from Austin LBJ High School. Well, let's see what that penalty is all about. Tom Mickey is going to explain to him by the rest of Wendell Shelton. Baker, coming into this game today, has won two ball games, but the Bears can be the kind of a team that can rise up and bang you around with the penalty is against TC. And roughing the passer called up, I believe. We we'll take that again. It's the quick outs that are really causing so much trouble. Mickey's a front thrower. 
And he hits eight. He takes an outside break. The stride ahead of the defender. Turns it upfield, and we have another good gain on first down by Baylor. They've been able to do that consistently. I think we have a roughing the passer call against that's Grant Tapp, the Baylor head coach, against Kevin Dean, number 97, who nailed Mickey after he had released the ball. So Jim Wacker uh, has a headache right now here in the first quarter. It's first down and goal to go inside the five-yard line for the Baylor Bears. And we're down to six minutes, 44 seconds to go in the first quarter. The Horned Frogs five and one, two and one in conference play. The Bears are two and four and two and two in conference play. Jay Kelly is now in a team along with Joel Barrett. Stockover is trying to slide outside, just fails to get into the end zone on a nice tackle by Span number 57 and Bill Tomney number 98, who also got a hand on him. Anytime they're close to the goal line, Baylor goes to the power eye formation. They've been very consistent over the years with the four running backs out of the fry on short yardage and close to the goal line. I believe I miscalled the uh, down on the last play there. It is now a first down goal to go. It was not a first down on the last play after the penalty. Stockmer at tailback. It's been joined by Coach Warrens and the hand uh, handoff goes to Stockmer who is hit and turned back. Let's see what he got out of it, if anything. And you can see the way TCU is playing their defense gambling, and we get a penalty flag on the field. I think one of the TCU men probably crossed the line of scrimmage just a little bit too soon, and all he said it was procedure penalty against Baylor, and it cost them five yards. While this is walked off, let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. This is the Raycom Sports Network. KSAT-TV, Channel 12, San Antonio. with you at Eamon Carter Stadium, where the sun is out. Would you believe it? It rained and rained and rained this morning. And it looked like we were going to start this game in rain. But right now, everybody is happy. It's homecoming at TCU. And who wants to have a wet homecoming day? You're right. We got a change of personnel for Baylor. First down on the one, they would have stayed in the power play. But now it's down on the six. So they go back into their normal offensive pattern. And again, something's wrong. And Mickey has to take second time out of the half. The offensive team did not get the signal back. Conrad and Pruitt. And that's Pruitt in motion. Conrad is a split end. McGee's got Stockover wide open. Nobody even close to him. And I saw Gary Spann, number 57, the linebacker, shake his hands in disgust and disgusted. It might have been his coverage. I think it was. Man for man coverage, definitely. So it's man for man on the linebacker who's supposed to go with the receiver does not go with him. It's an easy throw, and in this case, an easy score. So the Bears are on the board first this afternoon as Ralph Stockover picks up the touchdown on a six-yard pass reception. And Marty Jimerson will be coming on for the extra point try. It'll be held by Clark, number 15. And Jimerson pops it right through the upright. So the Bears Another look at the touchdown play. You see Mickey dropping back. Stockemeyer simply wears out of the backfield. It was man for man pass defense. The linebacker rushed the passer, did not cover Stockemeyer, who is wide open to score. So the Bears go up by a score of 7 0 with 5 minutes and 35 seconds to go in the first period. And we'll see what gets it here five times in the Southwest Conference. That drive, 74 yards, 14 plays. They had a big drive going the first possession, but fumbled the ball away. And they kept it for five minutes and five seconds, and there's 535 to go in the first period. Red the ball, excuse me, eight minutes and five seconds against a minute 20. That's unbelievable. You saw Tony Jeff for 27 in the middle. And it's good Jeffrey having the ball clear the end zone. That'll go down to the 30-yard line. One thing we see you on the returns is the burners back there. Ken Brown, Tony Jeffrey, Roscoe Tate. So now we'll see what uh, will happen when we... See T2 on the offense for the second time. First of all, we have a flag back at the point of the kickoff. So I hope we're not starting one of those days. <laughs> so far, we're going to get that fourth penalty called. Apparently, TCU will take the ball at the 30-yard line, refusing the penalty. Don't think he took it over the end line again. <laughs> no. Anthony Gully, number 11, will be at quarterback. 
Jeff Davis, 36. Tony Jeffries, 27 of the running backs. Dan Sharp splitting to the left side. And James Manus, the speedster to the right. Here we go. On the veer and the pitch. Davis having two getting yardage and one getting nothing. Ray Perry, the weak side linebacker, number 57 in Joe Severin. The weak side safety came up to make the hit on the city got nothing. Who runs a pure veer offense, triple option. Their quarterback reads the play defensive people much more than most teams that are using the veer today. However, thus far, there hasn't been much to read because the offense line has been nominated by Baylor defensive men. Second down, 10 for TCU at the 30. 7 to nothing for first quarter. Gully rolling and throwing and incomplete. James Manus, the outstanding All Southwest Conference receiver a year ago, and a lot of All-America teams will probably be placing his name on the roster this year. It's third down, 10 for the Horned Frogs, who have not been able to get the offense going in this, the second position on the offense here in the first quarter. The Gully has been hitting 70% of his passes coming into this game. TCU would prefer to run it, but uh, the way the Baylor defense is playing, they're going to have to throw some to loosen them up. Third down, 10. He looks back the other way and completes his pass to Dan Sharp, the flex in, and Jack Hurd, the strong safety number. Take a look at the play again. The fans thought that he had picked up the first down. It's a crossing pattern. Man-for-man -man pass defense. He has to turn back to get the ball. He's hit hard, quickly. Doesn't get quite enough yardage, and TCU is forced to punt. James Gargas, the senior from Mesquite, will kick it away. His punting average, 39.7, and he kicks this one downfield. Not too high, but he's got pretty good yardage on it. Thomas Everett on the return for Baylor. Everett brings it out across the 30 to the 32. Fine return. Clinton Brown, number 24, made the tackle to hang time. 3.79, a punt of 48 yards and a return of 19. And the Baylor Bears are coming up with pretty good field position. Next week, Raycom and the Southwest Conference have another exciting matchup. These same TCU Horned Frogs, the number one offensive team in the country, face the first place Houston Cougars, who beat SMU a week ago, to take the conference lead. That's TCU at Houston next Saturday at 11.30 a.m. Central Time on all of these Raycom stations. And the number one offensive team in the country has yet to make a first down. So the Baylor Bears uh, are turning on the defense. No doubt about it. They've, they have really done a job in TCU's first two possessions. As Stockmer goes up the middle, shy of the 35. Bill Tomedy, number 98. The sophomore from Westchester High at Houston on the tackle. Let's see what's going on elsewhere around the country today. At Wisconsin, the Buckeyes and the Badgers are scoreless in the second. Oklahoma State, boy, they've come up with a very good football team this year. And this is a surprise. Boston College supposed to defeat Rutgers. Georgia, Kentucky, Georgia, and the lead in the first quarter. Douglas and eight, so the wideouts now for the Baylor Bears. Second down, eight. Mickey throwing, uh-oh, intended for Douglas. And over there on the coverage was Sean Thomas, number 22, and that was a danger. A dangerous situation there. We watch Mickey as he fakes to Stockmeyer and then rolls it out on a bootleg. The play is well defended. The pass is on target. Douglas might have been able to catch it, but once again, I believe that Sun was right in his eyes. Tom Mickey of the Baylor Bears, 7 out of 12 for 67 yards and a touchdown. Bears leading 7 to nothing, 317 to go in the first quarter. And a third down, third down and nine coming up. Mickey right over the middle, and he completes it for a first down to Leland Douglas, number 17, and Billy Oliver, the right quarterback, making the tackle. A big gainer right over the middle to number 17, Leland Douglas. We take a look at the play again, and uh, this was, as you said, a very important first down. Douglas on the crossing pattern. It's man-for-man -man pass defense. He beats the defender, is able to make the catch, and picks up the needed first down. 14 yards on the play. First down for the Bears. This quarter has belonged to Baylor. No doubt about it.
Mickey on the option to Stockamer. Stockamer runs out of turf over there. Out of bounds near the midfield stripe. Bill Tomini, number 98. The 6'4", 242 pounder, the strong tackle. Chased him out of bounds. And Trammell and those guards uh, made such a quick charge on that play that I thought he was really had jumped offside. He's got very fast reflexes, uh, excellent nose guard. 6'2", 266 pounds, but quick. Second down, six. The ball on the 48-yard line of TCU. In a slot left motion. The pitch goes back to Stockamer. Stockamer misses the first down marker, I believe, as he was chased out of bounds, just missing. Kevin Dean, number 97, the defensive end, made the tackle. Bob Hearn, number 61, the right guard, was leading the blocking. Linebackers are the key to the defense. This is Span, TCU, fighting off the block, then moving to the outside. And it's fortunate that he was able to break through that blocking man because he was a man instrumental in stopping them from a long, long game. And I'd given the credit for the tackle to 97. Dean, he missed it. Span, as you mentioned, picked him up. Third down and very short. First down as Derek McAdoo gets his first call of the afternoon. Coming in as the tailback. Down inside the 40 to the 38. We have two minutes and 38 seconds left to play in the first quarter. A gain of four by McAdoo. Byron Linwood, the strong safety, who plays like a linebacker. Boy, he really hits. He's 6'3", 200 pounds. McAdoo had a big game last year against TCU. And the TCU defense certainly being dominated. Uh, they're trying everything, all kinds of stunts, bringing the secondary up. Baylor has been very poised offensively, throwing when they need to, but being dominant with their running attack. And they have made 10 first downs already in the first quarter. Todd Connor is down as a fullback. Mac, uh, Mickey is going for all of it. And back there on the coverage was Billy Jones, but his intended receiver, Bobby Joe Conrad, fell down at about the 20-yard line. When Conrad fell down, I don't think that he was knocked down because we didn't get any signal. We take a look at it again. Here he is coming down the field. He takes it to the outside, and when he's hit, he didn't expect to be hit, but in college football, you're clear to do that. Professional football, once you're four and a half yards downfield, you can't be touched, but he was caught off balance, knocked down, pass incomplete. Second and 10 on the 38 of TCU. Todd Connor at fullback, Derek McAdoo at tailback now for Baylor. A little play action. Mickey, incomplete, we're gonna get a flag. Intended for Bobby Joe Conrad and Garland Little's number 20 was all over him. You get a little desperate when they're moving the ball on you as efficiently as Baylor is. We have two minutes, three seconds to go in the first quarter. The pass interference call against Garland Littles, the freshman. And let's take a look at it again. You can see that there's no particular pressure on Mickey. He's got a lot of time, some hands up, but they don't bother him any. And there's the hit before the ball gets to Conrad and properly called pass interference. So the ball at the 27-yard line. Baylor leading 7-0. Little explanation uh, being made on the sideline to uh, Jim Wacker. It's the first down anytime you have pass interference. Ball right now resting on the 27-yard line of TCU. And this time it is Connor the fullback. Connor sliding up his right tackle down to about the 20-yard line where Billy Jones, the free safety, hits him after a gain of about seven. Connor missed the A&M game last week with an injury. In fact, uh, McAdoo, who is now the tailback, was the leading rusher last week against A&M, filling in for uh, Ron Francis, uh, who missed the ball game with a hamstring pull. I think he did a fine job in the previous play of thinking that he was running a bootleg after he had handed the ball off to Connor. Kept the TCU defense separated. Douglas splits to the right, H to the left. The tailback, McAdoo. McAdoo stopped before he can hit the 15-yard line with a minute 20 seconds to go in the first quarter. Kent Trammell, 91, the nose tackle, making the stop. Jeff Palmer is playing the left guard today for the injured Joel Porter. Uh, Porter. Palmer is number 71. He plays everywhere. Mark Addix also outstanding blocker at center. And they uh, gave the ball carrier enough room to get 
possibly the first down. We'll find out in a moment. This first half has been a Baylor show. First down, Bears. One of the things that Baylor has done, too, in monopolizing the ball, uh, Bud, they have neutralized this crowd. <laughs> well, it's hard to be enthusiastic when you're the number one offensive team in the country, and in the first quarter you have the ball only two minutes and 54 seconds. Connor and McAdoo are the running backs. Douglas and Pruitt are the wideouts. Slot left. First and 10. McAdoo gets inside the 15 by a little bit. Bill Tomini, 98, who's making an awful lot of tackles here in this first quarter, is on the hit. Gary, uh, Gary Spann coming up there to see what he can do to help out. And we're down to 47 seconds in counting in the first quarter. Total, total domination thus far by Baylor. Paul Jones is now coming in at a defensive end spot for TCU on second down and eight. Mickey on the pitch to his tailback McAdoo, and he really gets nailed on the corner by Darren Turner, number 93. McAdoo got the, was the, felt the brunt of the best tackle by this defensive unit today. That time the defense has everything handled in good shape. Every one of the option men taken care of and no gain on the play. So it is third down and nine coming up and look at this hit. Bang. Dean putting the finishing touches on. Good old fashioned Oklahoma gang tackle. We've run out of time in the first quarter. And the Baylor Bears are leading by a score of seven to nothing. We'll be back with the start of the second quarter after this message from a word. First quarter. And we open the second quarter in a third down nine for Baylor on the 16-yard line of TCU. Mickey under a rush, being chased, throws it back over the middle and completes a pass to Todd Connor, his fullback, and Linwood really nailed him. We've been told Linwood was a tough football player coming into the game, but boy, he is a hitter. 6'2", 205 pounds as we watch it again. Mickey being pressured this time. One of the few times he's been pressured, he falls back, throws it to Connor, who makes a fine reception, gets by the first man, and bingo, Linwood really unloads on him. And that's a hard way to make three yards. It is fourth down and five coming up. And the field goal unit is on with Marty Jimerson. This will be a 29-yard attempt. The holder is Clark Hood, number 15. Jimerson. Houston Stratford High School fires away, and his kick is good. So Baylor goes up by 10 to nothing. And we have just started the second quarter. And when you realize that uh, this TCU team going into this game was number one in the country in rushing offense, and averaged 507 yards a game, pardon me, total offense, 570 yards a game, 339 yards a game rushing offense, and they're leading the country in scoring, and in the first quarter, they have the ball two minutes and 54 seconds and make a total of seven yards. Quite a contrast. Remember to stay tuned at the end of the ball game when we'll be picking a Curtis Mathis player of the game. Curtis Mathis, a little more expensive, but well worth it. Well, TCU will give it another shot. They've had the ball twice offensively. Baylor has been able to stop him each time back in the first quarter. Now we start the second quarter. Jim Mueller is going to be kicking off for Baylor. Clinton Brown, number 24. Tony Jeffrey, 27. Roscoe Tatum, number 33, are all deep for the Baylor Bears. Clinton Brown, boy, you talk about it, you're just looking at him, 24. He had an 81-yard return against SMU and has a 24.9 kickoff return average. Everybody that touches the ball in the TCU backfield has got remarkable speed and they're Statistics are so impressive. Davis is averaging 8.4 yards per carry. Jeffrey, 6.4. The quarterback, Gully, is averaging 4 yards a carry. The whole team, 6.2. And that ball is going to be handled by Tony Jeffrey. TCU needs a big return, but they won't get it on this one, as Jeffrey has really nailed it about the 18-yard line. A return of 12 yards as the Baylor Bears react. And we can see a very good job of covering the kick. Number 74 is moving downfield fast. He's outrunning the rest of the people. Runs right straight through the blocker and then really unloads as 
the TCU team had trouble deciding which man was going to actually catch the kickoff. And so it's been a little frustrating. Robert Waters had that final jolt there, the business major from Fort Worth for the Baylor Bears. He's a rover back on the defensive unit. First and 10 for the TCU Horn Frogs. The ball at the 18-yard line in Frog territory. Mike Flynn will be up over the ball. Joe Young uh, and Tommy Sheehan are the guards. Steve Page and James Benson are the tackles. And we've got a little discussion on on the near sideline. Pat Coriette and Steve Grumbine have come in to play the tackle spots. We've got a problem with the clock, apparently. And somewhere we've lost eight seconds. 13.45 showing on the clock. And TCU wants those eight seconds back mm -hmm. when you're behind 10 to nothing. And that they are, first of all, a six-yard touchdown pass from Tom Mickey to Ralph Stockhammer in the first quarter. And then Jimerson's field goal here in the second period. Grant Tapp, he said, hey, sunshine on me. Everything's great. Jim Wacker said, I'd like to have a little of that sun shining on me right now. And I mean more than what's coming from upstairs. Jim just uh, received a new extension on his contract. Seven years now for Jim Wacker here at TCU. He is, he's brought not only an enthusiasm to the football program, but he's brought, brought an enthusiasm to the entire university. Motivation and uh, everything going. We look at the Baylor drive. Again, great ball possession. 13 plays, 56 yards, and four minutes and 52 seconds before Jimerson kicked the field goal. Gully dropping. Gully's got a man open, but there's a flag on the play. Keith Burnett, number 84, was out there. Ronnie Thompson had the coverage, and he got behind him, but a flag goes down at the 32-yard line, kind of where that pass play started to uh, take off with the receiver and the defensive back, and let's see if somebody got bumped. Well, Burnett certainly had him beat, and we can see a defensive holding call. So Ronnie Thompson, indeed, who had the coverage on the play, is guilty of holding. And TCU, so far, this has been the best offensive play they've had. He didn't hold him well enough because he went right past him. <laughs> right now, the situation's still being discussed. I started to say a moment ago, even on the kickoff return, TCU needs the big play. Wait a minute. He's calling it offensive holding instead of defensive holding, I believe. But when we see the signal that he gives, no, it's not. It's a defensive holding. And the penalty is marked off. So 10 yards on the on the penalty. And a first down. They were holding the markers over there. If it's a 10-yard penalty, it better be a first down. <laughs> you got to be able to count better than that to have any doubt whatsoever. Automatic first down. TCU's first first down of the day. And on a penalty. Kenneth Davis, 36, second leading rusher in the nation, 861 yards, but a, an unbelievable 8.4 yard per carry average. This is Gully on the option, and Gully, look at that defense react. And that is Steve Grumbine, who just came in to replace Paul Mergenhagen at a tackle, getting help from Jackie Bell, number two, the right quarterback, coming up on the hit, and they get very little of anything. And when Gully starts down the line of scrimmage, uh, you have the whole Baylor defense converging on him, and as you can see, the there really isn't anybody that he can see to run an option against because there are too many people there and they're dominating the line of scrimmage. Steve Grumbine from nearby Irving, Texas, attending MacArthur High School. Second down, nine on the 29. Nothing there. Steve Grumbine again, number 77. Derek Turner, 81. Also in there on the hit along with Irvin Randall, number 49. And we look at Grumbine, number 77, simply slipping the blocker making the tackle of Gully from behind, and the defensive tackles of Baylor are dominating the offensive guards of TCU. Baumkamp, Mergenhagen, Grumbine, and Coriat split the time equally, so they're always fresh, and thus far they've been awfully effective. So the Bruise brothers are at work this afternoon. TCU has not converted on a third down yet today, and this is third down nine. Gully gets a good block to swing outside, and he's got enough daylight to get the first down, and he just makes it. Jack Hurd, number 16, the strong safety, tripped him up. But Gully was looking at the stick on the far side. He got it up for the first down. They'll mark the ball at about the 40-yard line, and it's the second first down of the day for the Horned Frogs. Number 38, Manus, is the best receiver, probably certainly the fastest man on the CCU team. You can see how well 
the defense adjusted to pick him up, and this is what enabled Gully to have so much room to run. He saw the receivers were covered, turned it upfield, and before the support can get there, Gully is able to slip forward for the first down. Gully on a drop to throw on first down. Back over the middle, he's got a receiver, and that's Burnett, number 84, Ronnie Thompson, the coverage. And it's a gain of 23 yards approximately at the 38-yard line of the Baylor Bears. And finally, the TCU offense is starting to get on track. Well, let's take a look at it again. You can see Gully back. Does not get any pressure. He was able to hit Burnett on the crossing pattern. The coverage man, man-for-man -man coverage, was just two steps late getting there. Baylor leading 10 to nothing, 11.54 to go in the first half. Tony Jeffrey is back in as a running back now along with Kenneth Davis. That's Jeffrey on the handoff getting very little. Pat Corey at number 40, Steve Grumbine, number 77, on the hit after about two. The ball will be spotted on the 35. I don't believe they've made any yardage to speak of on any of their basic offensive plays. Their veer triple option has been stopped cold at the line each time by Baylor. You mentioned those very strong tackles that Baylor has. They've got four excellent tackles in Greg Baumkamp, number 76, Paul Mergenhagen, number 79. Then they bring in Corey at 40 and Grumbine, 77, and they don't drop off in performance at all. This time it's Davis maybe getting that first down as Thomas Everett, number 27, who leads the tacklers with 34, getting him after about a nine-yard pickup. And this is the first time that Gully has been able to have a good read. You can see Davis, as Gully pulls the ball back out, Davis is able to slip it around to the outside, get it turned upfield, and pick up the first down on the play. So Davis, who will no doubt go over the 1,000-yard mark, either possibly today or next week, gets the first down at the 27. 10 minutes, 57 seconds to go in the first half. TCU trailing 10 to nothing. Gully completes it. He hits Dan Sharp. The flex in. He is brought down by Johnny Subia, number 12, the weak side safety. A gain of about eight as Dan Sharp from Bernie, Texas, on the receiving end of that Gully pass. Gully is very quick. That's the ball was thrown about two counts after Gully got it from the center. and. Uh, he was able to hit Manus quickly, or sharp rather. Second down, they're going to give uh, seven yards officially. Second down, three for TCU. Davis, first down and more. He's on the way. He's in there. Touchdown. play they're hitting it to the outside rather than inside and that stretch is opened up for davis the last two times davis has scored his ninth rushing touchdown of the year so the offense finally gets on track to be ken oz to try for the extra point john denton will be holding oz right through the middle and the horn frogs are on with an 82 yard drive at eight plays we can watch the touchdown again see the handoff but see how davis hits it to the outside he's going outside the tackle rather than inside of him he found good daylight broke it upfield into the clear into the end zone and when you've had a disappointing first quarter as gully has had and the tcu offense not moving at all you're a little happy when something good happens and you can see the entire team here cheering so things pick up on an 84-yard drive by TCU. Baylor leading at 10 to 7, and we'll be back right after this. John, a senior from Dallas. Very impressive drive, coach. It sure was. They passed well enough to open it up, and then breaking the handoff to the outside rather than inside was the key play. On the near sideline, it'll be Derek McAdoo at about the 8-yard line on the return, and he goes down at about the 12. Coaches always talk about the kickoff returns. If you fake them and try to go laterally, if it breaks, it breaks the big, big yardage. But if you don't break it, then you're moving laterally instead of up the field. And this return did gain four yards, but they're well backed up. 12-yard line. That man being honored right there in the middle is number 47, Romeo Smith, who made that tackle. And the very impressive drive at TCU, only eight plays, going 82 yards. That's 
than a normal average per play, and it only took them three minutes and 25 seconds. Now we're going to see what this TCU defense can do. Mickey wants a big one. He's got a man out there, and it is Horace Ates. And Ates is up to midfield and down to the 47-yard line of TCU. And that's the last thing in the world that Jim Wacker wanted to happen to that defense on that 40-yard pickup. Well, Ates did a very good job of looking the ball in. Mickey dropping back, and this is an excellent throw. He arches the ball. Ates looks it, comes in with it, hits him right on the numbers. The defender almost overran it, but Littles was able to adjust and make the tackle, but it was a big gain on the play. First down on the 47-yard line of TCU. Pruitt and Douglas are the wideouts. Mickey runs the option. Mickey breaks it back up the middle for first down, getting almost 12 on the play. Billy Jones, number one, the free safety, making the tackle. And once again, Jeff Palmer, who plays everywhere on the line offensively, comes up with a play there that is going to get him a couple of points when the coaches grade out the films. On the previous play, Span shot the gap, but the play went to the opposite side, so he was a wasted man. When your linebacker shoots and they run away from you, you aren't able to help in the pursuit. Andy Pitts, number 49, comes in as a linebacker now for the TCU Horned Frogs. He's the swing man. He'll go either the weak side or the left side. McAdoo and Sargent are the running backs. Mickey going to Sargent, and Sargent, no place to go. He's on the sidelines. Billy Jones, number one, the free safety after him. And again, excellent defensive reaction by the entire team. They picked up the man hitting on the fake. They handled the quarterback, forced him to pitch, and then had three people on the tackle. The rushing game in this first half has really been held down. The rushing game of TCU has really been held down by the Baylor defense. Davis, 42 yards, Jeffrey, 2, and Gully, 12, and that's been it. Here come the Baylor Bears on a second and 10 after no game. Play action. Mickey, man open. That's Barrett. And Barrett has another first down. He is all the way down to about the 20-yard line. Maybe inside the 20. Let's see where they mark it. Right now, we're going to call it an 18-yard pickup or thereabouts with Garland Littles, number 20, the quarterback, on the coverage. And the pass defense uh, has not been well executed by TCU. They're not unable to get a good rush on Mickey. His protection is excellent. He's throwing the ball accurately. The defensive secondary is just a little bit slow on their man-for-man -man coverages, and the receivers are open. And Joel Barrett was hoping, oh, he was hoping he could get all the way into the end zone. He has never scored a touchdown in his collegiate career. First down, inside the 20 of TCU. The show blitz, here they come. McAdoo. McAdoo near the 10-yard line. The flag is down. Paul Jones, 82, gets the tackle on the play. About a 7-yard pickup, but we'll have to wait and see what the flag means. When the blitz is coming and you have the draw play call, you're guessing correctly. Holding. Offense. Big, big penalty. Well, Grant Taft's team jumped out to a 10 nothing lead. Completely dominating play in the first quarter. And then an 82-yard drive by the Texas Christian Horn Frogs netted a touchdown, extra point. 10-7 Baylor. The ball marched back to the 29. So the holding call cost the Bears. And they will have a first and 20 coming up. And number 14, Carlson, is getting the play from the offensive coordinator, sometimes from Coach Teff, and is signaling it in to Mickey, who is the quarterback in the game. Slot right for the Bears. First and 20. Mickey throwing to the near side. He's got Pruitt, and Pruitt is rustled out of bounds near the 23 by Garland Littles, number 20, the freshman who was red-shirted last year, and Jim Wacker has a lot of red shirts playing on his team this year. Pruitt and Conrad are the two wide receivers. They're on the same side, as you see. They go downfield. Pruitt breaks it to the outside, while Conrad breaks it to the inside. Pruitt gets open for a moment, but is hit hard, and it's a short gain in the play, only six yards. Second down, 14. We have nine minutes left to play in the first half. Baylor leading 10 to seven, in possession on the TCU 23. Second down is the call. Douglas and Eights are the wideouts. outs. 
McGee. That's Douglas. And Douglas has a first down. He'll have a first and goal to go. The ball marked at about the three. They're really picking on Garland Littles. A gain of about 19 on that one. And Douglas ran a fine pass pattern. And once again, Mickey put the ball right on target. You can see Douglas moving downfield. A little bit of an inside fake. And then a break to the outside. Littles was not able to stay with him on the man-for-man -man coverage. He recovers enough to make the tackle. But it's first down Baylor. At the three. <laughs> That's Matt Clark over there, excited about something. Kobe Forns, number 34, and Derek McAdoo will be the running backs, or will be joining in the running back area. That's Eights also back there. The handoff goes to the wing back, Eights, and Eights is at about the two-yard line where you stacked up. So Baylor running out of the power eye. Gerald Taylor, number 37, the strong linebacker from South Oak Cliff High School in Dallas on the hit for TCU. And Baylor continues to dominate time of possession and also dominate the TCU defense. So the Bears have done very little wrong today except fumbling on the first drive that they had going, turning the ball over to TCU and then stopping the Frogs after three plays and causing a punt. They came right back and marched for a touchdown. Eights and Forns in there. This time the dive up over the top goes to Derek McAdoo and he is stopped near the one by Gerald Taylor to 37 who was in there on the last tackle. He replaced Kyle Clifton, who's now with the New York Jets. So he had a, some big shoes to fill. And a good shot of how the goal line defense, if they get penetration and you get poor ball handling, it doesn't enable the ball carrier to hit as quickly as he would like to. Play has very little chance of picking up a great deal of yardage. And while Taylor made the tackle, Span did a great job filling the hole there. Third down, coming up and goal to go. Flags go down as the play gets underway. Needless to say, all the fingers are being pointed uh, by the TCU anyway. The only one that's important is the official. <laughs> yeah, they, they point the other way. It was those guys. Hey, Mr. Ref, it was those guys, remember? A procedure call against Baylor. Seven minutes, 27 seconds to go in the first quarter. Now things a little bothersome here for Grant Taft. He had that ball down on the one. With the two downs to put it in the end zone also. Now it's back at the six-yard line, and Ralph Stockover is back in as the tailback for Baylor. And Baylor has had five penalties, TCU only two. Yardage about the same. Kobe Forn's the fullback. They had to move into a fullback spot. He has played tight end. Uh, Todd Connor was out last week. Connor's been in a couple of plays today, but Forn's is in there as a fullback. McKay stumbling, goes down for a yard loss. Linwood, number 35, the strong safety, and Gary Spann, 57, followed him all the way across the field to get him down. I said a yard loss. I beg your pardon. He picked up enough yardage to make it on the put it, the ball on the two-yard line, where it is fourth down and goal to go. And that's the big thing. He didn't put it in the end zone. <laughs> and we're getting a look over at the sidelines. Do we try to make the touchdown, or are we going to go for another field goal? And Grant Teff still has not made up his mind. You see the play here as they knock him out of bounds. He stumbled for that five-yard pickup. Fourth down and goal coming up, and we'll be right back after this word from Toyota. Down and goal to go for the Baylor Bears. The Bears leading it 10 to 7. They are out of timeouts. They're, they also don't have uh, 11 men on the field. Uh, they were one player short, and they're going to have a hard time getting the ball off. As we... They are indeed. They're going to go for it on fourth down. possession and the factor that you control everything you can't afford to blow it away as they did that time out of timeouts and very close to violating the 25 second count davis and jeffrey are the running backs tcu 97 yards away and davis look at him go second and third efforts out to the nine 
Kevin Hancock, 50, the middle linebacker. Robert Waters, 44, the strong linebacker on the stop as Davis gets that ball out of the danger area out near the nine-yard line where it becomes second down and three. And each time that they have hit that handoff up the beer and he's broken it outside of the tackle, they picked up good yardage. Davis and Jeffrey are the backs. Gully goes down, but he didn't have the football. Mergenhagen comes up. Uh, he did have the football. Mergenhagen comes up on the tackle. And the ball is spotted at about the seven. Mergenhagen has got better eyes than I have. Third down five coming up. Remember to stay tuned at halftime for the next of our series, Greatest of the Great. Today, it's UT's Harvey Sewell. Uh, Greatest of the Great is presented by the Jefferson Pilot Corporation, dedicated to life and the things that make it worth living. TCU trailing on a third down and four coming up. They're trailing 10-7 and Manus, the receiver, but Johnny Thomas on the coverage and Manus could not hold on to the football. I believe that he could have made the catch. It was well enough thrown. I think he was too anxious to turn and start running with the ball. So the Horn Frogs are faced with a punting situation, and James Gargas comes in to kick it. Thomas Everett will be back deep for the Baylor Bears, who lead it 10 to 7. We have five minutes and 30 seconds to go in the first half. Gargas with a 39-7 average. Gargas has had trouble in he, he has out kicked coverage so much. They've tried to get him to get that ball up in the air, even if he gets up distance. And he does this time to the 49-yard line. Here's Everett on the return. Everett inside the 40, Everett down to about the 38. of 41 yards, a return of 13, and a hang time of 3.8. And we'll be back after this word from the Jefferson Pilot. Has great field position and a 10 to 7 lead. Let's talk for just a moment, Bud Wilkinson, about the hang time. We've clocked twice now, under four. What are they looking for? Well, when he's kicking it that long and it's under four, there's no way you can possibly cover it. You've got to have a hang time of about 4.5 to kick it that far and not have a good return. Mickey on play action, throwing to the near side and completes it to Todd Connor as fullback, and Connor is out of bounds outside the 15-yard line, a gain of about 22. Sean Thomas, 22, finally chased him out of bounds. And any time the swing back is out of the backfield, TCU does not have a linebacker on him. <clears throat> Connor swinging. Again, no pressure on Mickey. Connor wide open. Swung to the outside, and then breaks it down the sidelines. It's man-for-man -man pass defense, so there's no quick support. Finally, TCU defenders do get over to make the tackle, but it's a big game. Matt Clark, a freshman from Corsicana, split wide to the left for Baylor on first down. This time, the swing goes to Ralph Stockover. Ball was kind of thrown behind him, and Billy Oliver, number 23, had the coverage on the play. You mentioned the fact, Bud Wilkinson, that uh, about the coverage when the linebackers are not covering those backs coming out of the backfield. Now, Baylor must have done a pretty good, well, we know they always do good scouting jobs on <laughs> right. the opposition, but it looks like they have set their passing game plan to uh, take advantage of that. Well, TCU is feeling that they've got to get extra support quickly from their linebackers because Baylor's running attack has been so dominant. When the linebackers are shooting, they can't cover the pass receiver at the same time. Mickey, the option. Mickey inside the 15. Yanked down at about the 14 by Kevin Dean, number 97. And we take another look at the play. Mickey has run the option extremely well and has made yardage almost every time. But this time, Dean, the end, makes a fine play. Looked like he could cover the lateral if he had to. Mickey tried to turn it up the field. There was no daylight there. And Dean tried to strip that ball, it appeared, also. Third down eight coming up after a gain of two. The ball on the 14-yard line of TCU. Baylor leading 10 to 7. 4.30 left to play in the first half. Connor and Stockhammer are the backs. Play action. Mickey, time. Mickey throwing for the end zone. Throws it out of the end zone. Good coverage by Byron Linwood on Bobby Joe Conrad. And it looked like Mickey read that very well and just cranked up and fired the ball over everybody. It was a uh, fake of the draw play. That froze the linebackers a little bit. Conrad starts down the field, and you can see he gives a little shuffle step, then breaks it to the outside. The pass is a little late getting there, and even though he had the defender beaten momentarily, by the time the ball got there, no chance to make the catch. So Jemerson, who has kicked a 24-yard field goal, will be going from the 21, add 10 to that. A 31-yard effort here by Marty Jemerson, who started the season in the, like the fourth team unit. And his distance is good, and it's between the uprights. So Jemerson gets his second field goal of the day. 
And Baylor moves up to a 13 to 7 lead with 419 left to play. <laughs> Curtis Mathis monitors. They supply our monitors for the games, and they're really outstanding. A little more expensive, but worth it. And we appreciate them, and we hope that you do too. All right, it is 13 to 7 with Baylor leading. Baylor's kickoff is going to go out of bounds. 12 yard line where it goes out, so. TCU will request, I would assume anyway, another kick. You take that five-yard penalty and hope that the covering team is going to be a little bit out of breath and won't cover quite as fast as they did the previous time. Well, this this is what Baylor did on the last drive. Five plays, 24 yards, and had the ball a minute, and Jimerson kicked his 31-yard field goal. He had a 29-yard field goal earlier. I started to say on the last uh, kickoff, too, bud, that uh, TCU needs a, they need a big return. They, they've, they've, they've just uh, been... Uh, uh, a little bit, uh, I don't want to say lethargic because, I'm, well, maybe I will. Baylor has made them that way in a sense because they haven't had the football. Okay. They, have, they have not been able to come up with a great big play to really explode this thing. They had the one good drive, but uh, they've had poor field position on the uh, exchange of possession. The first time on the 27, the next time on the 30, and then they had it on the 18 and then the 3. So you uh, have a long way to go. They were able to put one drive together, and maybe a good return here will start them off right. Jim Mueller, and this one is going to come up a little bit short for Clinton Brown. Now let's see what Brown can do. Just couldn't quite get to the outside, but you've got to give a lot of credit to John Simpson, number 13, and Jim Mueller, who went up there to make the tackle after a return of 18 yards, and TCU will have the football on the 31 of the Horned Frogs. He's a very strong ball carrier. He ran right through three or four men, and those Baylor people are determined. They hit, they got good balance, and he still had the strength to overpower them. Coriat and Grumbine have come back in at tackles again as Baumkamp and Mergenhagen are getting a rest. Pass to the near side. Completed to Dan Sharp. The flex in, and we're looking at Scarapa, number 10, the senior from San Antonio Clark High School. So we're going to see now what Scarapa can do. He gets a six-yard pass completion on his first possession. Jack Hurd, the strong safety, coming up to make the tackle. Scaraffa started the season. He was injured in the Utah State game. He had won the starting job. Scaraffa has completed 45% uh, of his passes, 174 yards going into this game. Quick hand off in the dive to Kenneth Davis, and he gets a shoulder that belongs to Ray Berry, 57, the weak side linebacker, and is stopped in the 40-yard line. Got about three. But they, they're third down and short now. And they haven't been able to get the second and third option going at all. When they run the handoff play or the first of the three triple option plays, there's never been anything for the quarterback on the outside to either keep or pitch. We're nearing the three-minute mark to go in the first half. And this time, Scarapa on the option. He pitches it to Davis. Davis may be on the way. Here he goes. Time they got the pitch. <laughs> there he is, Kenneth Davis, a 60 yard touchdown run. That's his second touchdown of the day. Yard gallop. This time he goes 60, and TCU lines up for the extra point with OZ, and that that's the big play we're talking about about getting this offense to explode. Three plays, 60 yards on the carry by Davis. The extra point is good, and we're at two minutes and 59 seconds to go in the first half. TCU has taken the lead over Baylor, 14 to 13. Scarafas comes off the handoff fake. Makes a very late pitch. You can see how the Baylor defense was closing. There's no one there. It now becomes a foot race, and Davis has just got amazing speed down that sideline. That's why he's averaging 8.4 yards per carry for the season. There's nobody going to catch him. He's big, strong, 5'10", 210, and very fast. Let's take a look at it again. This time we're on Davis all the way. You can see how late the pitch was. The halfback, cornerback rather, was already up, almost getting in to take care of the lateral play. And once Davis has daylight, maybe there's nobody going to get him. So Davis, the junior from Temple, Texas, is now over 100 yards for the day. 104 yards here in this first half. An explosive attack. <laughs> wow. So the 
first half, which had been very frustrating for TCU. I don't think they've had the ball uh, a total of five minutes in the first half. It'd be very close to that anyway, and uh, yet they've been able to put two touchdowns on the board, even though in the first quarter they were totally dominated by the Baylor defense. Well, that frustration is gone now, at least for the time being. Let's see if they can stop the Baylor Bears, who have two minutes, 59 seconds, to do something here in the first half to get back into the lead. There's the drive, 69 yards, capped by that 60-yard touchdown run. That ball will come out to the 20. It did bounce to the end zone. And if he hadn't been kicking it on the angle across the field, it would have been through the end zone. Two weeks from today, Ray Com and the Southwest Conference have a dandy for you. The first place Houston Cougars and Coach Bill Yobin travel to Austin to face the Longhorns of Fred Akers. It's the third ranked Longhorns and the first place Cougars two weeks from today, November 10th at 1130 a.m. Central Time on the Ray Com Southwest Conference Game of the Week. First down on the Baylor 20. And the TCU defense has forced Baylor to kick two field goals, which means they haven't been totally porous. Davis has had five carries of over 50 yards this year. That last one, 60. Tom Mickey, man wide open. Great catch by Matt Clark, the freshman, dumped by Byron Linwood. 24 yards on the play. And you have to feel that uh, TCU has got to do something to put more pressure on the passer than they've been able to do thus far. Mickey's had plenty of time to throw the ball. Matt Clark, number eight, 5'10", 191, was the starting quarterback for Corsicana last year when they lost in the Class A 4A finals to Fort Bend. First down on the 44. Stockover. The defense reacts. No gain. Gerald Taylor, number 37, making the hit for TCU. And this is a good defensive charge by the TCU line and span the linebacker, number 57. Reads the play, comes off the block, and is in on the tackle, and that's the kind of support you need to get from your linebackers if you're going to stop the running attack. And also, got to get them out there to cover those swing men on the passes. You know, but I'm really impressed with the way Baylor comes back. After that big touchdown run by Davis, they come right back, Pick up big yardage. They're in good field position. Two minutes, five seconds to go. Mickey right over the middle. Man wide open. That's Clark again. Clark trying to bust it to the outside. Brought down on the 38-yard line by Garland Littles. And there was nobody around him. He gets 18 on the play. When you're in that man-to-man -man pass defense and someone makes a mistake and doesn't go with their own man, the receiver is wide, wide open as Clark was. My Mickey. goodness. Again, Mickey is throwing the ball well. And you talked about Baylor coming back. Uh, well, this is a team with great character, great poise, extremely well coached. Minute 50 seconds to go. Mickey 16 out of 24, over 200 yards in the air now, but no timeouts remaining in the first half. The pitch comes back to Stockhammer. Stockhammer is yanked down by Linwood. And Baylor wishes that they had not used up their timeouts as prolifically as they did during the first part of this half. There's a minute and 30 seconds left, and they cannot stop the clock. So Stockerberg got nothing on the play. Back lost about a half yard. So it is second down and 11 coming up. Now we have a minute 14 seconds to go in the first half. Baylor trailing by one. Leland Douglas is back in as a wideout, along with Horace Eights. Flags go down. Incomplete pass intended for number 23, Horace Eights. Garland Littles, number 20, had the coverage on the play. And there's a penalty marker on the field. Let's pause five seconds now to allow our local stations to identify themselves. This is the Raycom Sports Network. KSAT TV, Channel 12, San Antonio. Okay. Merle Harmon and Bud Wilkinson with you. The clock is stopped on the penalty, and it was called against. Baylor, we have a minute, two seconds remaining in the first half. Baylor trailing by one. And the procedure penalty marks off five yards against Baylor. That's somewhat inconsequential at this point in the half with the time remaining. Grant Taft talking to his quarterback, Tom Mickey, Cody Carlson, out with a groin injury. Tom Mickey has done a fine job. He led uh, Baylor to a victory over A&M last week. And last year, as you recall, they alternated. They started the season this year alternating plays even. Leland Douglas and Glenn Pruitt are the wideouts for Baylor. Sargent and Stockhammer are the running backs. Mickey 
trying to run away from Dean. Throws on the run. He just simply threw the ball away. No question about that. Mix up, pardon me. Mix up in the backfield. Looked like they wanted to run a Statue of Liberty play. He wasn't able to make the connection. and Nothing there. So that takes care of that play for the game. Maybe, huh? They killed the clock, though, and there are 55 seconds remaining. Tom Mickey waiting for the play to come in. Mickey, 16 out of 25, 232 yards and one touchdown here in the first half. And they'd like to gain enough on this play to put Jimerson again in field goal range. Eights and Clark are the wideouts. Right over the middle, it is completed to Clark inside the 20 at the 19. He caught the first pass of his career last week at College Station, and look what he's doing today, 24 on that one. We take a look again at the defensive secondary, and you can see them all here, and watch them drop back. They're now starting to pick up their men. Looks like they're a zone this time rather than man for man. Clark is able to break into the middle, find the hole between the two defenders, and make the easy reception. 40 seconds to the go in the first half. Swing pass to Stockhammer incomplete. That'll stop the clock with 35 seconds remaining. So now Baylor will have a chance to kind of regroup the forces with 35 seconds to go in the first half. The ball inside the 20th of 19. Grant Taft sending his play in with Horace Eights, his wing back. And if you catch the ball in the field of play, it would be very difficult for Baylor to get the field goal unit on the field in time to kick the field goal. They'll probably throw the ball toward the end zone or to someone who can go out of bounds. Marty Jimerson has kicked two field goals today for Baylor, one of 29, one of 31. Second down. Incomplete, Matt Clark, the intended receiver, and Garland Littles had the coverage. They are really working on Garland Littles' side. He's a freshman, and that, I guess, would figure. I think he's getting a little more confidence. Uh, he doesn't look quite as tense as he did when the game began. Glenn Pruitt and Bobby Joe Conrad will be the wideouts. Sergeant and Stockermer will be the running backs. Clock stop, 31 seconds remaining in the first half. Paul Jones is coming to defensive end now for TCU. Again, the man is open, Bobby Joe Conrad. Conrad is brought down inside the 10 at the 9-yard line. The clock showing 24 seconds to go in the first half. And if that's a first down, it'll stop the clock. And the clock is stopped right now while the officials take a look. It is a first down. It is first down and goal to go for Baylor. So the Bears have come roaring back here after TCU grabbed the lead on the 60-yard touchdown run by Kenneth Davis. Got the ball on their own 20, and they brought it all the way down the field to the nine-yard line. First and goal of the nine. Mickey almost intercepted. Three men were on the coverage on Douglas, and Oliver just about picked it up. And watch the good reaction here. Mickey drops back, looks to the outside, then drills the ball, and look at the TCU people close on it. That's the kind of reaction you need to get to stop receivers downfield. How can a team with 23 first downs in the first half against the opposition six be behind on one play? 60-yard touchdown run by Kenneth Davis. Talk about dominating the clock. Baylor has done that. Second down goal. Mickey flips it, and it is caught in the end zone for a touchdown by Glenn Pruitt. His third touchdown reception of the year. A nine-yard touchdown pass. So Baylor goes back in front, 19 to 14, with eight seconds remaining in the first half, and Marty Jimerson will come in to try the extra point. They were able to move down the field without having any timeouts remaining and still do a good job of handling the clock. One of the things that has really impressed me, Bud, is, is the poise the Bears have had in all the situations that they've been in today. Very well balanced and extremely well coached, and they've been very dominant offensively. So Jimerson, who did not, uh, in fact, did not travel for the first two ball games, we have a delay of game penalty call now against the Baylor Bears. Eight seconds remaining. 
Jimerson uh, came in. In fact, he got in his first ball game, the one that we did at SMU in the rain, and mm -hmm. kicked a field goal in that one, you might recall. Very well. Eight seconds left. 80 yards, 12 plays. Beautiful drive. Good mixture of passing and running the ball. Here we go for the extra point try with Jimerson. Clark Hood will hold. And Jimerson is perfect. So with eight seconds remaining, Baylor now leads it 20 to 14. And we look at the touchdown again. Mickey rolls this one out. It appeared that he could run, but I think he was fearful that if he tried to run, he might not get it to the end zone. But he doesn't get much pressure. Pass protection is excellent. He finds Pruitt curled into the end zone, hits him right on the numbers, and let's take another look at it. See him rolling to the outside. Now he kind of looks downfield. He's a little bit afraid to run, even though he could, because, again, of the time remaining on the clock. Pruitt is open in front of the defender, Jones, makes the reception for the score. Well, let's see what uh, TCU can do with eight seconds. What The only thing they can do is get a touchdown on a return. Can they? Well, it happens sometimes. They have to break it all the way in the clear. The clock will start when the TCU, TCU player handles the ball. And I would presume that Baylor will not kick this one over the end line. So Jim Wacker, who had a lead of 14 to 13, which he enjoyed for a little bit anyway. Momentarily. Yeah. <laughs> this game's not over, and it's not going to be over until the 60 minutes are up. Both teams are capable of... Moving the ball, Baylor's been more consistent than TCU, but TCU amazingly explosive. We'll have highlights at halftime. We'll have both bands at halftime, and that kick uh, kickoff is going to be returned by TCU, and the ball was kicked on the ground. I would think intentionally Linwood picked it up, and we have three seconds remaining in the first half. They didn't want any one of those guys like Clinton Brown or, or Jeffrey or Tatum to have a chance for the long return. So there's the story. Three seconds to go in the first half. The ball on the 25-yard line of TCU. Scarapa has come in as a quarterback. He was the man who guided TCU to that last touchdown. And, of course, Davis finished it off with a 60-yard gallop down the sideline. Scarapa going for it all. And out of bounds. Keith Burnett was the receiver, and the clock has run out, and we've come to the end of the first half. Johnny Thomas, number 41, had the coverage on the play, so Jim Wacker and his Horned Frogs will go to the dressing room behind by six points as Baylor put one on the board with just eight seconds remaining in the first half, going on an 80-yard drive, and Pruitt's catching that touchdown pass. So we're at halftime. The score, Baylor 20, TCU 14. We'll be back with our halftime.